What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Um, it is now, what, uh, Tuesday? Um, and Steve-O's not here. He's off on his holidays for two weeks. I'm not gonna see him for two weeks, so you're stuck with me. Sorry about that. Um, but we don't need wide angle, which is all good. So we've got the okay on the seat frame. He's, uh, he actually does quite like it. I know he's mucking about and stuff, um, but it is in keeping, it is all good. I have gone round and welded it all and I've started to grind it. Um, but I just wanted to weld it and get it all secure and stuff. The grinding and the dressing up and everything else is probably gonna wait until literally everything comes apart and I'm just working on the frame. Because that way I can stick it over there on the bench and I can turn it upside down and round and all that kind of stuff and get it where I want to be able to easily get in and grind it and dress it back. Um, it is all secure, it's not going anywhere. There's, there's a load of weld in it. I still need to add some here and there. But, you know, that'll come, won't it? Um, we did have a bit of a cock up. <laughs> right, you saw in the last one, everything went black and white. That's my bad, I did that. The stupid camera's got a button right next to the select button. When you push it, everything goes black and white and I didn't notice. So, sorry about that. Um, I'm still getting used to it. I'm using it today as well. I need to practice. Um, but this new microphone thing, he seems to be doing the job. So, yeah, happy days. Um, because we're mucking about with the camera, and we did lose a whole load of footage. So I actually had Steve-O sitting on this, and it held up, and it's not bent or anything. So it did work. It was quite funny. I mean, the, the lift is only rated to, what, a thousand pound? So we man the bike, but you know, we thought we'd just have to risk it, eh? <laughs> um, we did come across one problem though. Where's it gone? I think it was, um, what was his name? Paul Woods. Woods? Wood? I don't know, Paul. Um, he did comment saying that this normally goes here and then we've got a Stevo, and then we've got a tank, and we're a little bit short on real estate, and he's perfectly right. When Stevo was sat on it, um, I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. This is gonna mount here. It can go that way, it can go that way. Don't really matter. With that like that, Stevo's arse is, hard, is, is right here. So there's no room. <laughs> and bearing in mind, I wanna shove tail lights and a number plate old. I mean, at one point I was wondering where he was gonna put the number plate. But um, that's all gotta go in this under the seat ump as well. And with that there, we just ain't gonna have the room. Which has made us kind of chew things over. And I came up with an idea. What I'm gonna do, I'm, he's got some little holes in his tank. So I'm gonna cut a bloody great big one in here. <laughs> And I'm gonna stick it under here. This, you hear the rust? It could be a bolt, I'm not sure. But anyway, once I've cut a hole in it, I'll be able to get it out, won't I? <laughs> so what I wanna do is, all this is gonna be sheathed underneath in metal. It's gonna come right up to the frame as well. And it'll probably come up to that bit. So what I'm on about doing is mounting the battery somewhat like that ish maybe up there maybe down there so what it's going to mean is i'm going to have to cut all in here for that to go in and then i'm also going to have to chop the back of the tank out like that reason being is that the this is all going to be made up with a seat hump, which I am going to make out of metal. I've got the shrinker stretcher now, itching to have a go with that. I've never played with one. So um, that'll be included later on as well. Um, so that's all going to be metal and it's going to kind of come up the sides of the, the sides of the tank to fill this gap in, which I think is horrible. Um, the seat is probably going to come up to about here, be quite wide, and then it's going to scoop down and then up at the back where it joins into the seat hump. 
So the idea is that is all metal. I'll fix it with tabs and everything from the inside so you don't see any fixings or nothing. And then I'm going to do, probably under here somewhere, there'd just be like a little uh, quick release. Might do it as a lever or, I don't know, I'll work something out. Um, but we're probably going to reuse or make something similar to like the seat catch that you know the thing you put your key in turn it and the seat pops off something like that um, so you just pull that and the top pad will come off so once the pads off you'll be able to get underneath here if you needed to do anything with the wiring or get to your lights or do whatever but you'll also gain access to this bloody great hole that I'm gonna cut in his tank <laughs> Um, so you can get to the battery. Um, there will be a little charging lead that comes off so we can plug like an Optimate or something like that in it as well. So he's not going to have to get in there unless he wants to change it basically. But he's still going to need to get to it. Worst case scenario, he just takes the tank off. Which on this is a doddle. Um, but it's, it's a bit of a work in progress. But that's what I'm going to do. That's where the battery's going to live. Underneath here. Means that I'm make a slightly bar bigger seat for all Steve-O's chunkiness, and then as he gets his buns of steel, he'll have a bit more room. So that's what's happening with the battery. Um, what I am gonna do, I've got loads of cardboard and stuff up here. A big chunk in the middle I'm probably never gonna use. So I'm gonna have an arts and crafts day later on, um, and I'm gonna start mocking stuff up. Um, I'm gonna just do it out of cardboard. I'm gonna get the shape of the seat hump and where that needs to stop. I'll put the sides in and I'm also going to sort out what I'm going to do with this battery tray bit down here. So that's that's the plan. Um, pom, pom, pom. There is quite a bit of fabrication in it, if I'm honest. But it's, I mean, it's all doable. It's all doable. I'll, you know, just take my time and I'll do it right. Hey. Um, we did have a bit of a day out as well. Uh, the last film that you saw was on Saturday the 17th of August, I think, which is when we were doing all this malarkey. On the Sunday, there's a bit of a special day in Plymouth, and I'll put some clips up, because we went and had a look-see, and it's the Plymouth Mega Ride. So, um, yeah, let's go and have a look. Right, we've had to park around the corner, because we're never going to get in the other end. This place is going to be rammed. And that's a big hill too. This, this is the hoe in Plymouth. Plymouth Sound, right in front of us. There's Drake's Island. Looks nice on a sunny day, doesn't it? Not too shabby. And this is Plymouth Mega Ride. Or the front of it, should I say. <laughs> Plymouth Hoe is huge. Um, it's just like this massive concrete slab. They do all sorts of stuff up here as well. But this is where the uh, mega ride, you know, the actual ride bit of it ends up. And everybody ends up here. Um, and there's loads of entertainment and stands and all that sort of stuff. See, these just aren't bikes. Too many wheels, BRPs. But yeah, the whole thing gets um, escorted by the police. See their bikes here, mostly a you know, keep folks safe and all the rest of it. Um, the mega ride starts at um, Lee Mill Industrial Estate, which is up the ways where Tesco's is. And all these bikes just rock up and they take over. I mean, they totally take over. There's thousands of the buggers. And they all meet up there. Oh my word. Someone's put some time into that. Um, yeah, they all meet up at Lee Mill. Um, oh, a nice little trumpet. Cool, someone likes that, don't they? How clean it is. Like a nice little popper. <laughs> but yeah, so they all meet up in Lee Mill. And then, um, under police escort, they all take to the A38. Um, and it is jammed. It's like dual carriageway. There's two lines of bikes in each lane and it is stuffed full. And they go all the way up to paint and round around about, turn around and come back again. So when you're on the backward leg, as far as you can see in front and behind you, is just bikes everywhere. And on the other carriageway, still going up to the painting turn, 
again, it is all bikes. There's, God help anybody in a car on the road in that particular place on that day. There's everything, absolutely everything you could imagine. You get sports bikes, scooters, mopeds, bobbers, choppers. I mean, you name it, it's all here. And people come from miles and miles and miles around. Um, we was chatting with a few fellas, like over from Germany, there's a couple from Denmark. Oh, look at that. It's Harley, but it's nice looking. Um, yeah, they come literally from all over the place um, just to attend the Mega Ride. I think um, the last year I rode it, there was something like 6,000, 6,500 bikes on the ride that all rock up here at the end of it. It's just huge. I, th I think I'm right in saying um, that it's the biggest motorcycle meet in the UK. I think. I could be wrong. I'm sure someone will correct me. But there's tons of them. Um, um, we're nowhere near the end of it yet. Um, this is just the front section. So I think they kind of called on this bit off for people to rock up early. And then there's there's truckloads of it. I mean, you can see down there, look. It's just a sea of bikes. Hundreds and thousands. Well, hundreds of thousands. Lots of them. Um, this is the other end. So this is the end that everybody sort of rocks up at the hoe and there's, there's just like this army of people that are there directing folks and helping you out and getting all the bikes parked up so people can get out again afterwards. But yeah, there's, there's just all sorts. And the crowd to turn out to see this is second to none as well. Seaton's Tower in the background there. It's go as far as you can see, look. It's mental. But it's a really good place to come if you're into bikes. Uh, the, the event happens once a year, around October, um, August time. Um, I think they had to bin it off one year because all the, you know, the weather was just horrible and they didn't want people making such a massive journey um, when it was unsafe to do so. But look, you've got a wheelchair on the back of the trike, look. <laughs> Wow, see that's commitment for you. But yeah, all walks of life, the only thing they've got in common is a love for bikes, basically. It is crazy. I think they're just like two hours later, people are still rocking up. <laughs> it's mad. I think the hoe is pretty much the only place that they could fit this. But yeah, there's this whole army of helpers. You see them all in there in the high vis jackets and whatnot. I think the or the organizer's name is Rich Bounds. Um, and it started out as just a, a little meetup basically. And I can't remember when the first one was. It was quite a while ago. And every year it's just grown and grown and grown, got bigger and bigger and bigger. I think they were down here at two o'clock this morning starting to set up. And then you get all the trades and everything else rocking up as well. Because all this gets put up and taken down in the same day. All the litter gets cleared. All the cones, the barriers, the portal, everything just magically appears in the morning. And then it's all got to be gone by the end of the day. All the, the local council have a fit. <laughs> but all these, uh, all, all these um, people you see in the high vis jacket, they're, they're just like volunteers. They just do it because they love it, basically. And it's quite a spectacle. So, you know, without them, none of this would really be possible, I don't think. Um, they, the, the whole thing is supported um, for a couple of charities. I think there's Devon Air Ambulance and another Air Ambulance, was it Cornwall Air Ambulance or something? I'll put a link to their, um, their website so you can go and have a look. See, there's loads of pictures up there as well because they've got like, a, a whole team of photographers that are taking pictures of the bikes on the run and uh, it's all on there. But look at that. What a setting. It's just bikes, 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 bikes. <laughs> it is mad. And of course, when you're in the convoy and you're just surrounded by bikes going down the A38, it's, uh, it's quite a thing to take part in. And basically, I think you just like pay a couple of quid um, to enter the run. and.
course people look at stuff like this decide they want something similar <laughs> and this is what you end up with <laughs> I'll do, it's not my cup of tea but somebody obviously loves it oh the Kawasaki H2R oh, metal like this but that's Mike Granger he's um, he's he runs or owns or whatever GT motorcycles in Plymouth he loves this bit of kit that old fella actually still races a drag bike he's got himself a higher booster I'm going to turn this bit up you can hear the H2R in the background <laughs> there's a man who's happy in his work um, you do get quite a lot of custom bikes and stuff obviously it being such a big meet and everything else um, and you get some famous names too I think we all know a fella that like to take an angle grinder to that um, some really old stuff there's some old vintage stuff that rocked up as well really cool it's nice just to wander around the, the hole and have a look at some of this kit. It really is. It's a good day out. Yeah. Quite a spectacle. Do like that, boys. I did quite a nice job on that one. Anyway, there you go. Plymouth Sound. Looking good. Looks all right in summertime, doesn't it? Bloody horrible when it's blowing a hooli, though. Rain's horizontal up here. <laughs> but there you go, that's the Plymouth Mega Ride. It's only a little bit, but go and have a look at the website, check it out. There's loads of pictures and loads of details, and maybe we'll see you next year. Right, so what I'm gonna do. Um, got an idea what I wanna do with the the seat ump. Uh, I need to mark that actually. Oh, right. <coughs> so with the battery, the battery was like that and it was hard up against his arse. That's a big arse. Right, so I want the seat hump to come down to probably about there so it's not actually gonna be a massive one it's gonna be quite quite small actually <laughs> it's because this bit's taking up all the room no um, so yeah it's gonna be quite small but I want to get it out of one curve uh, bum, 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 bum. right so I'm gonna have a go at making it in cardboard and then I'm also going to try and figure out what we're going to be doing under here. So I know I've got to chop the bottom of the tank out. But what I want to do is to basically cover from pretty much this, this, this tube across here, all the way back to the end as an under tray. <coughs> um, do a seat hump and then I can get the shrinker stretcher on the case with that one um, and then also build the battery tray in there so this can kind of live like that or something then we need to figure this out with how much space there is in the tank there's going to be something like that ish there's a lot of ish going on um, this is going to be boxed around like that and I'll cut the hole in the bottom of the tank and there'll be another box that's slightly bigger that goes probably only on three sides actually around this and obviously sealing up to the rest of the tank so when you put the tank on the outer sleeve goes over the inner sleeve and that will stop any crap and stuff getting in there yeah that'll work and then, so basically from the top of this tube will be seat, like, you know, upholstered seat. I'm not gonna have a sidewall or anything. Um, yeah, so it's just gonna be seat hump, 
seat coming up the tank. And we'll have a quick release mechanism, so you, you pop that, it'll unlatch it probably, well I don't know where, it could be front, could be back, don't really know. Probably at the front actually, because I don't like it when you put a seat on, you squish it up to the tank and then flatten it down. You always end up marring up the back of the tank. You'll probably see, I don't know, can you see that? There's loads of marks on the back here where it's all been grubbed up by the seat. So I might do it the other way. <laughs> wow. Who said it has to be conventional? Because it just doesn't. Um, but yeah, we're going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I've got loads of this card. Um, which I could probably use. Oh, it's long enough as well. Look at that. Awesome. That will go in like that. And it will hopefully bend around there. I'll mark it up, tape it underneath. Jobs are good. And this will be set in like, I don't know, five mil. So you get like the flat of this when it's done in metal. Flat like that across here. And then the tubes will come down just a little bit. So it's kind of pulled up just a tiny bit into the tube, which I think will make it look neater. It draws your attention more to the tube, which is the calf racer bit. So that's going to come up. Tubes the same thickness. Okay, it might not. <laughs> oh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Be fine. All right. So let's weight this down. That wants to go like that. And that will bend over. I'm not making any jokes about CAD design either. Everybody does that. It's so five minutes ago. Like that. Um, one thing you will notice on this channel, <laughs> it might be called quick bikes, but there's nothing quick about these videos and there won't be. Um, when I was grubbing about on Tinternet looking for stuff, um, there are an awful lot of videos of people you know, doing all these projects and having a laugh and blah, 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 blah. Um, and some of them, like Andy's channel and, and the On Your Bike crew and stuff, they do go into a fair amount of detail. But the thing that sort of cheesed me off the most about most of the channels, that looks awful, um, is that there just wasn't the the level of detail that I wanted to see. I wanted to see like everything. Um, all the fabrication, where the engine supposedly gets pulled apart and dressed up and, you know, all full engine tear downs and rebuilds and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's all just sort of lost in the edit.
simple. That's the worst sharpie on the planet. Um, yeah, it all just sort of gets lost in the edit, so you don't see all that stuff going on. Which I thought was a, you know, I'm not saying I felt cheated or anything. <laughs> but I just didn't get to see everything that I wanted to see. Which I thought was a bit of a shame. I think people missed a trick there. Um, and just like all the silly little things that just mess you up. It's like, you know, all right, well, how, how did you make a template? How did you cut it? all the right length and the right sizes and all that sort of stuff. You just don't see it. So, this this, this channel is gonna be showing everything, basically. Um, for a number of reasons. That's the first one, because then you get to see all the stuff that other channels aren't showing you. Which would be all right. Look at that. <laughs> Scissors. Um, but also, like, we, I mean, we're not doing it on this one. Um, but the next one is going to be a complete engine teardown. Because um, I'm going to want to dress it all up and dress it up real nice. And to do that, I need to get the cases split. And to do that, everything that's in the engine, on the engine or attached to the engine, has got to come off. Um, so I'm going to be videoing the whole thing. Um, reason being is that one, people then get to see the detail like I just said. But two, um, it's a really good reference when you come to putting it all back together again. Yeah, you imagine getting to the end of the job and you've got like a handful of bits left over. <laughs> You would just be second guessing. Oh, where'd that one go? What have I done? Looks important. So, yeah, it's not going to be quick videos. It's going to cover absolutely everything. Um, and I make no apology for it. get the shape of it and everything. Let me just mark that. Right, so that pretty much is going to be the center line. About there will be the center point, I guess. Look at that. <laughs> I'm not being rude. That's where the seat hump's going to start. And that's roughly the center line, which I can run down there, and then I'll be able to mirror it. Now, all good in theory, but once this is cut out of metal, it is going to be a nightmare getting it in there. Because 
the sheet would have to bend past pieces like this in the frame and then come flat up against it again if I wanted this to be a seamless bottom. So what we're probably going to do is chomp that down into three sections and I'll fill each of these in separately. This is going to be the awkward one. But we can get around that, that'll be all right. Um, so yeah, three bits up to there. And that'll be it. Right, let's have a look see. Um, obviously only mocked up in cardboard. <laughs> Cut the points to note. The, this tube and this tube is obviously both the same diameter. So essentially they're gonna be flat in line. Um, I want the, the tray to be set up just a little bit, like five mil or something like that. And the reason being is I want you to be able to see the work in there. Um, so if we look from underneath, can you see that? Um, it's going to be that sort of effect. It's only going to be set in slightly, but basically I want all this on show. That's what a cafe race is all about. Um, so I want it on show. Um, if Steve-O wants to have just the edge showing, which is the other option, then these panels can marry up to the tubes and I can just finish it all absolutely dead flat. So you'll never even see it and it will just look like one seamless panel. That's the other way that we could go with it and he needs to make a decision, all right? Um, round the back, I definitely want to have this tube on show all the way around, that's cafe. Um, I'll put a few little darts in here just to try and get a bit of a curve going this way as well as that way. Um, it will be curved a bit more and it will be curved further down here. Um, but with the shrinker stretcher that I've got, you can only basically shrink the first inch. Um, it will put a little bit of a bow here, but basically if you just chomp, chomp, chomp and take it all down, it'll end up looking like a cereal dish. So we might have to have a look at the shrinker stretcher. I might. I want a deeper throat to it. I'll explain all this later on. Um, but basically I want to be able to get more metal into the stretcher um, so I can shrink further up the panel and put more of a gentle curve in stuff. I don't just want to do the edge of it. That makes sense? I've got a sneaky idea. Um, we'll have to see if it works or not, but we'll, we'll do that in another video. Anyway, so that's the seat hump. All this real estate needs to be reserved for Stevo, <laughs> And it is on wide angle. Um, the seat is probably gonna come up to about here. So basically where that dink is. So the good news is I'm not gonna need to fix it. It will be coming down the side and overlapping the tank. Be it from there down to this corner. I don't know, something like that. Um, but we will figure it out. But you've got this gap all the way around it. So I quite like the idea of bringing it from here down into the corner here, running the seat back and up and over this. Um, that could work. I think that could look quite cool like that. So it starts at the back, a little bit of padding with an overlap onto the unit. So the seat will be like the A and then it will scoop down come along, go up to about there, 
and then from there it will probably have to come along like this and then down to the corner reason why I want to have that curve in it is because I'm going to cut a bloody great hole in this to shove the battery in that's the next bit that I need to mock up in cardboard um, so that's kind of it I'm going to send Steve our a picture we're limited on what we can do with the seat hump but I don't actually if you imagine a seat on that as well the seat pad I reckon that looks quite cool and it looks a little bit old school it is going to have a little bit more dome to it it's basically in line with the top of the tank ish I'm kind of on the mick here there will be a little bit more curve to it so um, hopefully you get the gist of it and then what I've got to do is we'll, we'll get the tank off and I'll figure out quite how I'm going to get the battery under there because it's quite a chunky thing well I say it's a chunky it's not a chunky thing it's not a chunky chunky but you know it's not the it's not the smallest thing so that's how far it's got to go in I don't want you to see any of it um, so it will go that way quite happily and if I can get it set in we should be all right I don't just want to have see I'm of two thoughts do I take the boxed out section right up to the edge of the tank which is one way that I could do it I could lay it down like that which is probably what I'm going to do so the battery terminals are at the top or I could do it that way um, if I, I don't know I need to if it goes that way we've still got room before we hit this thing uh, you can't see because I put the bloody under tray in <laughs> it'll go about like that probably about like that which takes it quite nicely up there the only trouble is I would need to set it right up here because I don't want it sticking below this this frame tube so it need to go right up there which kind of puts a line that I'm cutting the tank across like that so minimum the tank has to go up to is about there and then I want to leave a little bit of space for padding and also a bit of clearance obviously because we don't want any of the any of the cables touching metalwork because this the, the whole frame on this is going to be an earth so a little bit more work to do but that's kind of what we're doing it don't look too bad I mean, it's nice and minimal looks all right from the back doesn't it i think it does when you scoop the sides out and um, what we will be doing is wherever this lands on the frame basically i'm going to fix it in here so there'll be some studs that come off that are welded to this because this is obviously going to be done in steel and there'll be like a u-shaped bracket welded to the frame so basically to, to take it off there'll be one at the top one on the side one on the side there and you just undo those and the whole thing will just lift straight up vertically um so that's all cool and then wherever the seat runs because the seat is going to overhang this edge so basically starting probably from about here going all the way down the side there is going to be like a little flange that sticks up this is an electrics tie i don't want any water getting in it that would be bad so with an overlap there and a little flange sticking up on the inside it's going to serve a couple of purposes one is it's going to help to locate the seat but two it's also going to form a bit of a seal so no water can get in this one here is the strongest point of the whole seat frame we've got two bare two bare and two bare so this is going to be the main mounting point or main supporting point for the seat so what i'm going to do is make like a taco um you know what a taco is those mexican things that you put all the salad and meat and stuff in guacamole and stuff so anyway we're going to make a taco so a bent piece of metal like that yeah with a hole cut in the bottom on both sides and it'll be like a triangle like a taco um and there's going to be um i might just do one big one in the middle and it will come up to about here and it will come back to about here 
and that's where all Steve-O's chunkiness is going to be sitting. <laughs> and that, the the seat pan plate is probably, I'll probably make it out of three mil. I don't know, two and a half, three mil, something like that. So it'll be proper chunky stuff, and with a support in the middle, that'll be fine. He won't bend it or nothing. So yeah, um, this will be probably the other mounting point for the seat. So on the back of it, there'll be like a ooky out bit. So uh, I need to work all that stuff out. But basically, I can I can support it on the side tubes, this tube, and then there's also obviously going to need to be some sort of catch at the front. But that's what I'm thinking. I'm going to send him a picture and see what he says. But he ain't going to have a bigger cowl than that on the back. Because he's got to fit in there. And there's only so much room. <laughs> he needs to go to the gym more. Then we could do something proper funky with it. Um... If you look at the back, it also gives us a few options for stoplights and turn signals and all that kind of stuff. I quite like the idea of setting something in here so it's flush. Um, don't know, it's up to him. But we shall see, we shall see. Anyway, that's it as a first mock-up. Next bit is to do the battery tray. <laughs> So a little, still recording, still recording? Yeah. Right, so a little bit of faffing about. I just wanted to show you what it's all gonna be. So under here, um, what I did in cardboard, I made a, um, a little box for the battery to sit in which is um, 10 mil bigger than it needs to be. So that will allow us to put some foam padding and various other bits and pieces in there. And you can see all I've done is let it in slightly on this belly pan, uh, belly pan, seat pan. So from the side, you can't see anything, which is what I wanted. And bear in mind, most of the time when you're looking at a bike, you're higher than this bit. Then you're never gonna see it, which is cool. But when it's on its side stand and stuff like that, I didn't really want it poking out below that sort of level. So anyway, I've let it in here. And I don't know if you can see. Can you... Uh, you really can't see anything. Right. At the back here, it is just touching the underside of the tank. And I mean just touching the underside of the tank. If we pull this off... Pop that down there, without denting it. That's basically what it's going to be like. Obviously, I'm going to round these corners over. Yeah, they'll just get rounded off. Don't want any sharp edges, and it'll help with the relief of the bottom side of the tank. 
So that's kind of how this front bit is going to go. This is all obviously going to be welded into the frame and sealed up, so nothing's getting in there. Um, at the back here, I've left it a little bit proud, because then I can run a line of welding here as well to tie it in up here. Um, it'll obviously be welded down the sides and across the bottom, because I want the whole thing watertight and everything else. But that is how the battery's going to sit. The battery will be something like that. Okay. Sweet. We're liking this. So, purposely left a bit of wiggle room in it, because that way I can have the battery over to one side and we've got the terminal connectors on but you know they'll probably be on this side I would imagine on the right hand side um, the frame is also going to be grounded so what I might do is if the which one's the negative which one's the negative oh it would be wouldn't it okay that one there's the negative <laughs> so what I might do is I don't know there's, there's going to need an earth strap in there anyway. We'll figure it out. How hard can it be? So that's what we're going to be going with. Now, what I can do is the underside of the tank. Oh, what's going on? Right. Right. The underside of the tank obviously needs to be marked out down here because I need to cut a big chunk of this stuff out. Um, this is about three mil four mil this bit here it's about three mil away from the underside of the tank when it's on its mountings so what I'll be able to do is to offer it up draw a line around this on the underside of the tank and that will basically mark out where I need to cut it um, and then I can shape these bits down and do whatever I'm gonna do so that'll all be cool um, and then once I've got the marks on the bottom of the tank, I can get the angle grinder out, cut a big bloody hole in the bottom of it. <laughs> and what we'll do is we'll take the bottom out first. Um, we will stick the tank on. I'll have a ruler coming out here so it sticks past the tank. can measure the height of the battery. I ain't gonna be able, and then that will tell me the size of the opening I need to create in the back of the tank. So this will give me the forward position, ruler there, measure the height off, and that will give me the top measurement um, that I need to cut in the, up here, in the very front of the tank that you're gonna be looking at. So that's what we're doing. It's only a little bit of faffing about, it's cardboard and tape, I can't leave it cardboard and tape, although that would be a lot easier. But that's how I'm going to hide the battery away. I reckon it'll work. It'll all be um, cushioned in foam. We'll have a tie down strap in there as well. Probably like one of those rubber band straps with the clips on the end. But that's going to do the job. Um, spoke with Steve-O. He wants a longer seat hump. <laughs> I think he's missing the point. Right, I can't bring it any further forwards this way because he needs to get in there and he hasn't got buns of steel yet so it can't be any more than that we could change the shape of it you know we can monkey about with it and blah, whatever um, but he keeps going on about this dominator thing it's, the thing is I don't want him to lose his way again I don't want him to get all confused and, you know, oh, I want it to look like that, or I want it to look like this, and blah, blah, blah. You're having it cafe. It's going to be cafe, and you're going to like it. <laughs> um, with the seat, um, where are you? There you go. There is going to be a little lip, just like a strip that comes all the way around, because I want the seat pad this you know the the pan that gets upholstered is gonna um basically come there'll be a lip that goes around here so it's got something firm to sit against and it also means i can get a 
um, another place to sort of hook it under which would be cool there's going to be a lip that runs along here to help locate the seat the seat is going to be bent up and made out of um, three mil thick steel I would imagine something like that and it's going to go from the outs outside of this lip that I put on here so basically kind of just past the center of the tube because the center is where the, the lips going to be and it will come up go along and go down again um, partly because it puts that sort of oval shape into it which is going to give it a load of strength um, and then you can kind of you know upholster all the way down the edges so you just get you know the pad with the upholstery going straight onto this tube that will all be powder coated up and everything else and then at the front I'll make it so it kind of flanges up and meet, marries in with the front of the tank because obviously it needs to come up to clear this the battery so that's what we're going to do so it's going to kind of like like that come along and then up and flow into the tank I think it'll be great he's having trouble picturing it from the photos and stuff that I've sent but he just needs to trust me it's going to be fine it's going to be absolutely fine I think it's going to be great looking way better than just sticking a jig to rear end on it that was very street fire anyway I need to clear up um, oh, sit down for a minute right I need to clear up because I've got stuff I need to do I put a new tyre on the van about I three weeks ago just got a bloody great nail through it <laughs> it always happens to me right um, so I need to go off and get that done because it is now what 12 o'clock um, and I need to get off to um, so yeah that's the way we're going uh, I hope it all makes sense to you I know it's just done up in cardboard but this is just an easier way for me to picture what it is I'm building and I can send Steve over a picture of it because he's on his holidays for two weeks and he can go yay or nay or don't like that bit or whatever and as long as he, does, he, he doesn't grumble too much then I can just crack on and build it otherwise I'm going to be mucking about waiting for him to come back off his holidays and it's going to be really hot this week he sunburns like you would not believe it's going to be hysterical when you see him next on camera <laughs> Get a slap him on the forehead um, thank you to everyone that subscribed really do appreciate it um, obviously if this is the sort of thing you and your mates like pass it around like it share it um, we're now at 1300 subs which is amazing um, and it is growing it just kind of chips up every day we get a few more which is really really cool um, so today is Friday the 23rd of August um, what I want to do I can't I could start making this but I haven't got all the steel that I need so what I'm gonna do this weekend is have a I have got some sheet metal and I want to have a play with that shrinker stretcher um, I haven't had a go with it yet um, I don't think I'm necessarily going to be able to get that shape into it I'm not sure we'll have to try what I'm thinking of is using this as a template putting a flange on either end of it so I've got something to bend probably only down to sort of like there or something and see if I can get this shape and then see if I can tip this top bit in as well I don't know if I can do it with it um, because I can only get an inch of material into it it's going to shrink it it's going to put a little bit of a bow in it but it ain't going to be that much so I don't know we need to have a play and see if we can do it if I can't <laughs> I, I might cut it up and <laughs> because <laughs> I'm thinking I could make one with a deeper throat I need to work out how the jaws on it work um, essentially it's just on a compressive load and it forces the two middle jaws apart it's like a, a V that comes you'll see it at the weekend I'll document all that and we'll have a play and we'll see what sort of shapes we can get out of it but that's what I want to play about with this weekend so I'll be doing it on Saturday whenever um, so hopefully there'll be a video come out on Monday and I might get another one done during the week as well which will be grand 
But yeah, thank you for subscribing. If it's your first time here, do please subscribe. Do the little bell thing so you get told when I upload another video. We're still looking for one or two videos a week, so we can keep you entertained. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. Layers. <laughs>